So we've been talking a lot about the wired infrastructure that powers the internet, that connects us to each other. But you're probably wondering, most of my connection to the internet is wireless. So I want to show you a little bit of the wireless infrastructure that you use on a day-to-day -day basis, particularly the wireless infrastructure that you use if you use a cellular telephone um, or, uh, uh, or browse the internet on something like a smartphone. Um, if you understand, many of you may have tuned an FM radio in the past. Maybe you have one in your car or you have one at home. And if you understand how that works, you understand a little bit of the basics about how wireless networking works on the internet. In fact, this device, this smartphone, contains multiple different types of radios for connecting to different types of wireless networks. Um, there's a radio on here to connect to Wi-Fi networks that you might have at home or at school or at your business. There's a radio on here to connect to Bluetooth networks so that you can exchange data with uh, devices nearby. Um, and there's also several radios on here that are intended to connect you to the uh, long distance uh, mobile data networks that are operated by wireless carriers. So behind me, what you can see is a little bit of this infrastructure. And this is an interesting piece because this infrastructure uh, contains both an FM radio tower. That's what it was built as. So if you look up to the top of this tower, uh, there's FM radio transmitters up there. And this is actually an FM tra radio transmitter that would bring you uh, 88.7 in Buffalo, uh, which is one of Buffalo's NPR stations, WBFO. And the FM radios are a little bit different, uh, so there's a couple of important differences to point out between the FM radios that, you, uh, that are served by towers like this and the needs of the cellular network. So there's two important differences. First, FM radio, uh, AM radio, TV transmissions are broadcast. They're one direction. So there's one signal coming out of that tower, and all of the radios around here that would tune to that particular station are receiving the same signal. Uh, the second difference is that this signal is one directional. So when you tune a radio to hear WBFO, all you need to do is find the right station, but you're not actually communicating with this tower. And so FM and AM and TV radio towers tend to be tall, they tend to serve large geographic areas, and they tend to be extremely high power transmitters. So up at the top of that tower is an extremely high power transmitter that is broadcasting uh, WBFO 88.7 FM to probably miles uh, around here. Uh, anyone who would tune into that station would receive the same broadcast. In contrast, the radio on this device has to be able to exchange two-way data with the tower. And so think about that. That means that not only does this little phone that's powered by batteries have to be able to hear the connection from the transmitter, it also has to be able to send data to one of these towers. And that transmission, this is a battery-powered device, is a much lower, um, lower strength transmission. And so that requires that the cellular data networks be a lot smaller and closer together than these big FM radio networks. And so right at the bottom here, you probably notice these FM radio uh, towers. They're kind of hard to miss. They're so tall. But you've probably seen a couple of them nearby. Um, on the other hand, if you look towards the bottom of this tower, you'll see some vertical white antennas. And they're in three groups pointed in three directions. We'll talk about that in a second. Those are cellular, that's part of the cellular infrastructure. And those radios are communicating with my device and other nearby devices to provide both voice, uh, phone call traffic, and data traffic to your mobile devices. So you'll notice that those are quite a bit lower on this tower. Um, and you've probably noticed infrastructure like this before around you because there are a lot of cellular towers. Next time you're driving down the freeway, keep your eye out for stuff like this. You'll see it everywhere. Next time you're walking around a major city, look on the sides of buildings. You'll see these types of antennas mounted all over the place. And the reason for that is in order to be able to hear the signal that's transmitted by my device, these radios have to be a lot closer to my device. So yeah, my device is going to send a request to receive some content over the internet. It, that request is going to be transmitted through free space by this device that's only powered by a battery, and somebody has to hear it. That someone has to be pretty close by. Another really distinctive feature of these cell towers I want to point out that I found pretty interesting is that you'll almost always or very frequently see them mounted in this triangular pattern, particularly if they're mounted on a, on, on a post or on a spire. Why is that? So there's three different set of antennas, and they're pointed off at 120 degree angles. Um, that happens because in order to provide service what the cell, and, and provide an equal coverage, 
the cellular companies actually cut up space into hexagons. And those hexagons are laid on each other in a tessellated pattern that covers the space around us. Where each one of those hexagons meet, it's hard to show you with my fingers, that produces uh, 100, equal 120 degree angles. And at each one of the vertices of these hexagons, the cellular companies will try to mount infrastructure like this with these three antennas pointed off in different directions. Obviously, they can't do it perfectly, um, and so they have to find places where they can put stuff like this. But once you start to notice this infrastructure, you'll see the cellular infrastructure everywhere. And so this is just another part of the network that brings you the internet.